Oh, I want pretty, pretty desperately. She opened her eyes and found herself near a sign saying Utopia. So I'm a utopian, huh? She said to herself. Oh, why cannot I seem to walk? My God, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? Calm down, Utopian, calm down. You are a newborn baby. And newborn babies cannot even crawl, let alone walking. So that's the obvious reason. So stop grumbling and stop complaining. Okay, that explains all. Who are you? I'm a fairy and I'm known as Pretty. Oh, I see, she said. You will take care of me till I will be capable of taking care of myself. That is right. Then Pretty picked her up and took her to a small beautiful hut by the side of the river of the mango milkshake. She first gave her an oxima bath, then put a beautiful baby pink frock on her. Pretty combed her hair too. She then gave her a feeder of mango milkshake, sang a beautiful lullaby and put her to sleep. Pretty was a very pretty person. She had pretty eyes, pretty lips, a pretty mind and the prettiest soul anyone has ever seen. She often laid her in the pram and took her to the various places of Utopia. They met the innocent fairy, the beautiful fairy, the dreamy fairy, the candy fairy, the imaginative fairy, and so many other fairies that she could not even remember now. Everyone and everything in Utopia became her friends, and she loved practically all of them from the bottom of her heart. Every Friday, Pretty took her to the Imagination River. It was her favorite picnic spot. One sits on the boat of the river. It takes one practically to any place one wants to go to. She often went with Pretty obviously to the straightforward land in the Imagination's boat. The days passed by this way and she learned crawling. She crawled on the beautiful green grass and then started turning on it. She thanked Allah for giving her such an existence in such a beautiful place as Utopia. Pretty fairy improved her vocabulary. She told her that everything has a reason to exist. Every place is a logical place. Pretty fairy told her that soon she will be sent to the realistic Utopia. She taught her the opposites of honesty, loyalty and simplicity. She wept a lot on the day of her departure at the Utopian airport because she loved Utopia a lot. She loved pretty, she loved the blue sky, the imagination river and practically everything about Utopia so much that she thought she shall not be able to survive without them. She asked pretty if she could visit her in the hut near the Mago Milchik river every Friday. But pretty said no. She emphasized that she should never ever try to come there as the consequences not only would be awful. In this way, she came to the realistic utopian world. It neither had fairies nor the Magomilchik river. The only common things were the imaginary river and the spring season. The same beautiful flowers whose fragrance filled the entire atmosphere with the beautiful smell. She was on her own in this place. When she grew two inches more, then she was sent to the severe realistic utopia. She stayed there for a little time. It was somewhat not beautiful. Oh, Pretty had told her, not beautiful is called ugly. She murmured. For the first time since her creation, she saw what ugly was. Here, she met goblins of wickedness and meanness. All of them wanted to make friends with her, but she refused to accept their friendship. There was spring season and flowers too, but roses did not have any fragrance. The butterflies were colorless too. The air was the slave of the goblins. At first, she was horrified to see this place and she got hurt. But then she realized that she had absolutely no other alternative than to stay here. She often wrote letters to the pretty fairy, but she never wrote her back. Then she was sent to the real world. She was told that after that, she shall go to the awful realistic 
world and then to the eternity. By now, she had become indifferent to the hassle and the fatigue of travelling. She was somewhat misfit in this world as she lacked all the characteristics of these places which she had visited after leaving Utopia. She was told that she could still adopt the characteristics of the goblins of the severe realistic Utopia, but she declined all of the offers. She was an illiterate person in this real world. She was often abused, often her simple words were twisted. She was severely hurt. She wept a lot and her tears consoled her a little. Here, the flowers had thorn, but their fragrance remained to themselves. None of the flowers shared their fragrance with the air. She offered her friendship to a flower, but instead its thorns pinched her heart and suck her blood. She tried to tell it about Utopia, but it gave her just a sarcastic laugh. There were rivers of hatred, rivers of misunderstandings, rivers of meanness, rivers of politics, rivers of filth, and rivers of harshness. Her only friend Thorn told her to drink the water of these rivers to acquire the nationality of the realistic world. She drank the water, but she vomited it out. She was very thirsty, but the waters of the rivers did not fulfill her thirst. Ultimately, she was sent to the severe realistic world. It was a desert. She was thirsty since the time she came to the realistic world. She saw water nearby and she ran after it. It seemed so near, but even running after it for so many days, she could not reach it. She was in a haggard condition. Her feet were sore and she was stumbling. Severely realistic cactus told her that mirage can fulfill the thirst of only those who had drunk the waters of the rivers of the previous worlds. The mirage was amused by her melancholic condition. She was deeply hurt. Even the thorns of the cactus did not make friends with her. She was abandoned, lonely, and desperate, but she could not. Also by the ticket of eternity, as she lacked the years of severely realistic world to buy it. Then she decided to change the path of her journey. She started her life journey blindly, till she reached the utopian world. Where is pretty? Where is the Mago Milchik River? And the hut by its side? The imaginative river? And where are all the beautiful fairies? Then she read the sign, Insanity Utopian World. She wept for pretty for a long time, but all her tears were in vain. Then to kill the echoing silence within herself, she made friends with the grass on which she once had crawled and learned to walk. She killed her thirst with the watermelon of the sands of the ocean of insanity. She ate fruits of contentment of the trees of insanity. Now she is living here as a happy person till the time she shall be transferred to eternity.